FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Welcome, and you are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz. It's 9-11-18. Hard to believe 17 years ago today, that fateful day. I remember it well. I was in New York, wasn't in the city. I was trying to drive to a deposition I was doing out in Queens, and all of a sudden the cell phones just stopped working, the radio stations stopped working, and somehow my assistant was able to call me and said, don't go to New York. It's shut down. Uh, you know, the trade center was attacked and better come back to the office. And then I did. And of course, we lost our cell phone service for a week. We lost our regular telephone service for a week. And we were north of Manhattan, 35 miles north of Manhattan. Dale, always, always remember, as will you. Well, Hey, and if you want to get involved in the show, which we love, send me an email to kl at com. We answer all. I'm about 100 behind right now, believe it or not. It's just been hard getting the new studio set up. But hey, the video is coming shortly. We're going to do Facebook Live and YouTube Live a little later in the week. Just stay tuned. It's going to be great. Hey, so this is a good day to talk about foreign policy is Donald Trump a statesman? Well, person you're about to hear from says resoundingly yes. And who am I to argue? I don't know what a statesman is, but I sure know what a statesman isn't. And we have not had statesmen for the past, well, God, go back to Reagan. We haven't had a statesman there, although they pretended to be plenty. Well, well, Danny Toma, you're with us now. Hey, you're a foreign policy expert, 22 years of experience all over the world. Uh, we're really thrilled to have you on the show, Danny. Thanks for coming on. Thanks. Thanks for having me. I, I appreciate it. You know, you made the, it's interesting you made the comparison uh, when talking about statesmen and talking about Ronald Reagan, because I think there's a lot uh, that um, President Trump has in common with Reagan. Obviously, they have very different backgrounds. Um, vocabularies. And, you know, <laughs> different, everything. different vocabularies, but, uh, too, but, right? But, <laughs> you know, so, but the thing about it is, yeah. you know, the same kind of opposition, the same kind of unreason opposition that you had from the left against Ronald Reagan, you see some of those same voices again today uh, with President Trump. Yeah, total over-the-top, over you know, vitriol, uh, you know, that, uh, well, Reagan, he was going to cause a nuclear war, just like, uh, just like Trump. And Trump has really been the opposite. He's tried to avoid all of these uh, nasty engagements wherever possible and trying to no, keep I, the U.S. Exactly. out of war, if anything. And yet the uh, deep state is uh, represented by their mouthpiece. The mainstream media refuses to accept that. No, that's absolutely true. And, you know, you mentioned about everyone talking about Reagan getting us into into war and, and, and the same thing with Trump. You know, at the very beginning of the Trump administration or even before he came in uh, with some of the rhetoric about North Korea, everyone was talking about, oh, my gosh, you know, we're going to be in a nuclear war with North Korea. And then a year later, when we see the situation de-escalating in North Korea, some of those same voices are saying, how irresponsible is he for, you know, actually talking to, to, yeah. to the leaders of North Korea? So <laughs> It's, uh, uh, it's, it's, you're damned if you do and damned if you don't. <laughs> yeah, it sure does seem that way, doesn't it? And in a lot of ways, he's making the, making the world a lot safer. Uh, look, look, where is ISIS now compared to, uh, president Obama messing around with it, monkeying around, I dare say at the risk of being called a racist, uh, monkeying around with them, but never really taking them seriously, never really making a serious effort to defeat ISIS. Here we are. ISIS is all but gone. Absolutely. You know, uh, uh, over the first year of uh, President Trump's administration, by pursuing this America first foreign policy, uh, working with, with our allies, working with people in the region, ISIS lost 96% of its territory. We're talking well over 20,000 square miles. 
it ceased being the Islamic State and became just a bunch of terrorist losers on the run uh, and on the defensive. Uh, so this is something, of course, you're not hearing much trumpeted in the in the media. And had it been any other president but Donald Trump, this would be front page news. And I think that's something really important to remember, particularly on this day, on this day when we remember when our country came under attack uh, 17 years ago this day. Uh, I was in Israel at the time, actually, when it happened at our embassy there. So I remember it very well as well. Um, our president has made this country safer. You know, if you look at that uh, anonymous uh, op-ed that appeared in the New York Times that supposedly, uh, if the New York Times is to be believed, yeah. written by Big some F. sort of insider member of the Trump resistance, even in that editorial, you know, they had to say, well, we admit that, you know, that President Trump's policies have made America more prosperous and more secure. And I'm thinking to myself, if that's the if, if even you admit that's the case, then what's the point of the resistance? Why are you yeah. fighting if you really are someone in the administration? Mm -hmm. Why are you fighting against um, a, a policy that is putting America first, as is the title of my book, putting America first and making America great again? Yeah, it's so true. Uh, it's uh, we've we haven't seen. We've seen terrorist attacks for sure since uh, President Absolutely. Trump uh, became you know, president. Uh, they've existed, but they seem maybe maybe it's a little premature. I wouldn't go around celebrating it, but it appears they're kind of uh, just uh, really just kind of diminishing, I guess, and yeah. becoming less I mean, of a factor. Anybody, you know, you, you're never going to prevent some a determined individual who has no concern for his own life from carrying out an attack everywhere anywhere i mean we, we uh, even even if we implemented a police state which nobody wants you're still not going to prevent that type of motivated individual from causing damage somewhere you know if he doesn't have any concern for his life but you're right the kind of attacks we have seen um have been less organized have been more amateurish um have it's you know it's it's sad for the people that are involved and sad that people are out there that want to carry out these kind of attacks but absolutely i mean i think the policies that president trump has pursued thus far have made america safe by putting america first yeah, that's a great point. So, and then we see North Korea. Look, uh, maybe they're still working on nukes. They probably are. We don't really know that for sure, but good possibility that is the case. But nonetheless, the rhetoric, the tone of their rhetoric, everything else, there's going to be a second summit meeting just read today. Mm -hmm. All of these things right. are favorable. Trump never promised that there would be peace with North Korea only that he would engage them and do the best that he could to uh, to bring about a peaceful resolution and get to North Korea to forego their nuclear weapons. And I think he's well on their way to doing it. I don't think he's being played by Kim Jong-un. I really don't believe that for two seconds. What's no, I, I, I would agree, agree with you there. Uh, you know, the thing about it is, um, this is again where the, the media is jumping on anything they can and reading it in the most negative way possible. Um, Donald Trump is talking with Kim Jong-un. They have some sort of relationship going on there. The media acts like that's a bad thing. When he talks with Vladimir Putin, they act like that's a bad thing. But, you know, as as a former diplomat myself, talking is where you need to start to be to be able to to build lasting peace. You know, we don't know how this whole North Korea thing is going to turn out. But we're down, we're on the right track. How far along the how far along the path we are is anybody's guess, but you actually have to start down the path before you make any progress toward peace. Peace and Donald Trump has been doing that. Yeah, and uh, and and initial signs are positive. I mean, well, we could get into it and into it, but there's so many other instances. What about the uh, trade deals? What's your feeling about China? Are they going to have to finally give in? I think eventually. I mean, you know, I, I don't think a, a trade war is in anybody's interest. And um, when it comes to, to trade, China is in it for the same reason like any, anybody else is. You know, they want to put China first, just like under this administration, we want to put America first. So each of us, by looking out for our own interests, by looking out for our own workers, by looking out for our own jobs, by looking out for our own economies, are going to have
to eventually reach an agreement that works out best for, for both sides. I mean, one, one thing that Donald Trump brings to the table is he's a businessman. He's a very successful mm-hmm. businessman. And he realizes, you know, you don't lay all your options out on the table, right, the first thing. And you not. work – you. you pragmatically choose those methods, not based on ideology or not based on what has been done or what people say should be done, but on actually what works. And so he's not afraid to use any tool in our arsenal, whether it be in in terms of not just straight out negotiation, but even even tariffs, you know, which for a lot of people is a dirty word. But mm-hmm. tariffs have been used in the past. In fact, tariffs were the cornerstone of the Republican Party uh, up through the early years of, of, of the last century. So um, he's not afraid to use any tool in the arsenal. I think that's one, one strength that we have with this president is he's a pragmatist. He's putting America first, and putting America first means using every tool that we have in the toolbox to try to um, make this country great again. And, he, and the thing about it is, it's, it's still early in the day, but how has our economy responded to this? Our economy is doing well. Yeah. Manufacturing is up. Uh, consumer confidence is way up. Uh, unemployment Small is way business. down. Unemployment, yeah. not just across the board, but uh, for African Americans, for Hispanics. Uh, I mean, I believe African American unemployment is as, at some of its lowest levels in history. Um, this is the kind of thing that uh, that uh, Trump is doing by using every tool that he has available to him. Yeah. So uh, if they don't impeach him, he might actually uh, get a lot done, huh? <laughs> yeah, I, absolutely. You know, I, I don't. I don't really think. That uh, impeachment is going to happen. I mean, that's not my that's not my area of expertise. But it, in terms of gut feeling, I don't think it's going to happen. And I think if it, I mean, were it God forbid to happen, I think that that would be not only bad for um, for the country, but but bad for the Democratic Party because it um, it would send the signal out that um, the real issue is is power by any means possible. And I don't think that's a good thing for our country. So look. Yeah. Danny, you've been involved in uh, government, in politics, et cetera, uh, deep state, all right? Trump makes frequent mention yeah. of it. It's all over the place. Is there a deep state or is it a conspiracy theory? Well, I don't think, I wouldn't say it's a conspiracy theory. I mean, I, I, I come from the, from the State Department. That's my background, 22 mm-hmm. and a half years at the State Department. Um, and I would say my colleagues, by and large, are, are good patriotic folks. I, I, a lot of them are definitely left to center. Wouldn't necessarily, necessarily see eye to eye with them. I, I'm interested to see what uh, some of their responses are to, to, to my book, America First, coming out. Uh, I suspect that they wouldn't necessarily share some of my conclusions. But I think most of them, by and large, are going to carry out the directives of the president, whoever the president is in power. That being said, yes. There are people across all branches of government who've been there for a long time, who have a certain point of view, and, um, you know, they're going to try to thwart anyone who who goes against that point of view. How strong they are, uh, how many there are, how successful they can be, I really don't know, because um, it's not been my experience. I mean, the people I've worked with uh, have been hardworking public servants, as a general rule. Well, we do have this thing. It's not pure uh, fantasy here. We do have this thing called the Senior Executive Service Corps mm-hmm. or whatever, where they, there's no limits on pay. It's Im- virtually impossible to get rid of these people. And, uh, you know, it, it's not just uh, a flight of fancy here, is it? No, I mean, there's, you know, any time, the, the, the problem is, is that uh, um, on both sides, Republican and Democrat, left and right, over the past few decades, there's been this consensus, which I talk about in my book, as to, uh, you know, what traditional American foreign policy is, and it's anything but traditional. It's something that's arisen really in the years past the Cold War, but it sees the United States as, uh, in the words of Madeleine Albright, the indispensable nation that sees further than anyone else. In other words, we're going to make the remake the world in our own image, whether they like it or not. And remaking the world in our own image includes telling other countries things that we don't even agree on as a nation ourselves, and, you know, promotion <laughs> yeah. of of uh, LGBT rights, of abortion, of things that we are bitterly divided upon in this country, Labor. yet in the past have gone overseas telling other countries that is precisely the kind of course that they need to follow. Um, I think when 
we have a president who's elected who says, wait a second, putting America first doesn't mean going abroad um, searching for monsters to destroy, as John Quincy Adams would, had said, but looking out for our own people, looking out for our own interests, and identifying those interests and protecting those interests, but otherwise trying to get along with the rest of the world. And, and here's the other thing. Here's another, another myth. When, 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 when President Trump says America first, you know, there's a lot of, of commentators on the left saying, oh, my gosh, is that selfish? But President Trump was elected as chief executive of the United States of America. His primary responsibility is toward his own people. And by looking out toward his own people – and not telling other people what to do, he's actually contributing not only to a prosperous and more secure America, but to a prosperous and more secure world. And he's, he's reiterated that on a number of occasions. And I think that's very true. And that's a, that's a good thing, isn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, so, um, you know, one, at one point in time, uh, you don't have to go back too many years, uh, but at one point in time, uh, especially if you go back to the 19th and 20th century. And if you look at my book, America First, I do talk a lot about the history of our foreign policy because I think that's really important, particularly in this Absolutely. particular time. But if you look at, if you look at our history, um, there were times when America was seen as the model republic. You know, people in what we call the third world today looked at the United States, you know, as, 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 uh, uh, as, really the city shining on a hill. And it wasn't because we were going around and shelling out money or we were going around Rodding and them. <laughs> telling them what to do. It was because we were taking care of our own people. We were taking care of our own liberties. We were taking care of our own prosperity. And as such, served as an example to others who sought to better the, the, their own lives and the lives of the people in their countries. Yeah, that, that is a great point. So, And uh, it's why every modern constitution in the world whether it's a uh, a freedom loving country or not is based upon the US constitution right and and yet you still have people on the left i don't know if you saw the article in the atlantic recently that said it's time to scrap our constitution yeah you know uh, this yeah. this is something that people on the left hate this whole idea of america first really rankles people because there's a lot of people there on the left, and I'm not saying all of them, but there are certainly a lot of individuals, mm -hmm. individuals out there who just don't think America was ever that great a place like, to start uh, with, as uh, like Governor Andy Cuomo, Cuomo recently accidentally admitted. Yeah, well, we need to get uh, Governor Cuomo a hat that says, uh, you know, D MAGA, don't make America great again, <laughs> right? Yeah. Wouldn't that be good? Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, he's uh, he can really uh, tend to turn your stomach, can he? Yeah, yeah. You know, it's uh, I obviously not everything we've done in, in in the past has been wonderful. Obviously, not everything we'll do in the future will be wonderful because we're a, a society make made up of fallible human beings. However. On the balance, I think that America has been a great force of good in the world, and I hope she continues to be so, to be that way. Uh, I think we have a good chance of that happening for the foreseeable future with the way this administration is starting out. And really, in so many regards and so many times, uh, America has been a uh, the hope of the world, right? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. You know, yeah. the idea that um, we're going to trust our people— the idea that uh, we're going to build upon this foundation of, of, of limited government uh, mm -hmm. and um, give space for people to, uh, to become successful, you know, to pull, yeah. put away the obstacles from artificial obstacles from people reaching their dreams and their success. Uh, that's powerful stuff. If we don't cloud it by getting involved in nation building and telling other people what to do. Yeah. Couldn't agree with you more. So your latest book, uh, the title, and where do we find it? Yeah, it's, it's, it's America First, Understanding the Trump Doctrine by Danny Toma. It's available today. Today it just it came out, and in fact, um, I had a, uh, another appearance canceled, so we're promoting it for the very first time here on your show. Oh, uh, but uh, available, available at any bookstore or online, America First, Understanding the Trump Doctrine by Danny Toma. Very cool. Hey, well, we'll have a link to it. In the show notes of this interview on FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com, make sure if you haven't done it already that you sign up for a newsletter. Got one coming out in the next day or two. You're definitely going to want to see it. Hey, just subscribe on FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com. 
send us an email. Be a part of the show. That's what we're here for. The email address, kl at kerrylutz.com. Twitter feed at Kerry Lutz. Facebook page, Financial Survival Network. Hey, Danny, really appreciate you coming on with us. And Enjoy like, talking with you. It's hey, been great. Great book, and we wish you the best of luck. Thank you so much. Thank you. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next.